All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sanko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good crypto news stuff for you. And the first thing I want to talk about is Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto tortured in upcoming spy film, which is a dark comedy called Decryptor. It features a mismatched NSA team trying to force Satoshi to help them destroy cryptocurrency. So a UK production company is making Decrypted, a film about the NSA team trying to extract information from Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, so nobody knows who the pseudo-anonymous Satoshi Nakamoto the alleged creator of Bitcoin really is, but British film production company Substantial Films reckons it found his very likeliness in Asian American actor Aki Kotabi, who will play Satoshi in the film Decrypted. And here's a picture of him, in case you don't know who Aki Kotabi is. I don't know if I've actually seen him in movies, but you know what? I'm going to go with it. It kind of resembles Satoshi Nakamoto, even though I don't know who Satoshi Nakamoto looks like in the first place. Um, you know, supposedly a Japanese guy, but uh, other people, you know, most people think he wasn't actually Japanese. Uh, but uh, pretty close. I'll give it that. We'll, we'll go with that. Considering it's a dark comedy anyway, it's not really entirely to be taken literally in the first place. The film is billed as an outrageous and pro provocative dark comedy in which a mismatched NSA team kidnaps Satoshi and attempts to torture him for the information they need to destroy cryptocurrencies. Uh, it's slated for release on December 1st, 2020, although the Substantial Films website mentions COVID-19 related delays. Uh, so more can be gleaned from behind-the-scenes pictures on the website. Some of it takes place in a decrepit kitchen, some of what could be a plush hotel room, and more still in an investigative room where poor Nakamoto could be tortured. Now, I don't know. This is starting to sound not very comedy-like, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. So who's in the cast alongside Aki Kutabi is Satoshi. The cast of Decrypted includes Amelia Fox, Sophia Miles, and Kevin McNally. Uh, Nakamoto's love interest is played by Talisa Garcia. So Decrypted, again, no relation, is the latest in a series of films and TV shows to use cryptocurrency as a plot point. On the small screen, Bitcoin's reference in billions and altered carbon, while a TV drama based on the BBC podcast, The Missing Crypto Queen, will tell the story of OneCoin founder, the Dr. Ruja Ignatova, from OneCoin, the woman who basically was probably like one of the biggest scams in cryptocurrency, and she sort of took off, but her brother was actually found. So... You know, but additional movies that have featured cryptocurrency, one called Crypto starring Kurt Russell, which, you know, I'm really into cryptocurrency, but as soon as you take one look at that movie, uh, you're just like, nah, <laughs> I don't think, um, I don't think I'm going to watch that. Uh, it might be good. Who knows? Um, so if anybody in the comment section has seen that, uh, say if it was good or not, because I, I honestly didn't even bother. Uh, but it barely made a splash on release. Uh, Jared gave it uh, three out of five Bitcoins in his review. Real clever. That hasn't stopped Hollywood from going back to the Bitcoin well, though. Uh, Zac Efron is to star in King of the Jungle, a film about crypto renegade John McAfee, the cybersecurity tycoon and presidential candidate who went off the rails and fled to Bolivia after the authorities suspecting him of killing his neighbor, uh, which, yeah, was pretty much uh, pretty much John McAfee's M.O. the whole time. Uh, so I like Zac Efron. If you guys haven't seen Zac Efron play Ted Bundy in that movie uh, that came out recently... That was so good. Uh, so, yeah, I'll probably actually be watching that one. Uh, finally, there's Bitcoin Billionaires, a film about Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, which eh, I got enough of them in the uh, Facebook movie they, they came out with a while ago. So uh, even though they weren't the real actors, but you know what I mean. The former Olympic athletes who were awarded a settlement in a dispute of Mark Zuckerberg, they bought up a lot of Bitcoin and became billionaires. Well, eh, good for you guys. Anyway, moving on to additional news. Uh, I'll definitely be looking out for that uh, Bitcoin um, Satoshi Nakamoto movie, Decrypted. Uh, but again, that's probably not till the end of the year. And I'm not sure if it's going to be like in theaters or anything. It didn't really say. Uh, I think it's sort of an indie movie. So I think it's one of those sort of things you're going to have to sort of hunt down and find. Alleged crypto Ponzi plus token withdraws $67 million in EOS. Uh-oh. So uh, while it apparently belonging to Plus Token, an alleged crypto Ponzi scheme has withdrawn over 26 million EOS from its wallet, according to Whale Alert. As Decrypt reported uh, previously, Plus Token was accused of snatching up $3 billion from its users last July. At the time, Chinese media reported that if the allegations were true, it would make Plus Token the biggest crypto Ponzi scheme to date. 
Uh, so apparently they got some EOS in that. Currently, it's unclear where or to whom exactly 26 million EOS were sent. Since receiving well, it is marked as unknown. If Plus Tokens organizers were to cash out, it could have a sim- uh, significant impact on the cryptocurrency market or the price of EOS, at least. Um, you know, and what's interesting about that is that EOS is sort of like this constitutional, uh, you know, 20, 20 or 21 node operators uh, sort of situation. And I, I believe that they could probably all get together and actually uh, actually seal that wallet and could probably stop it. And I think that's the one, you know, one use case that I would agree on that if you made, if you made it EOS as this sort of system where you can stop transactions or you can do this and reverse things, this, that, or the other thing, um, you know, might as well do it. Uh, with Bitcoin, can't be done. So, uh, you know, you're out on that one. But um, yeah, so basically the Ponzi uh, Plus token uh, is allegedly the largest of all of the crypto scams. And uh, so moving $26 million in EOS, or 26 million EOS tokens, uh, so it was $67 million to a wallet, uh, probably trying to sell it off. Uh, where would you even sell uh, $67 million in EOS? You'd really have to split that up and then, you know, doing it on getting fiat out of it, mm, not going to happen. Now, I always thought for a second, you could probably put it in a mixer or something like that. But you know how long you'd have to mix $67 million worth of EOS for it to actually be mixed properly and to, you know, go to an unknown location after that. It'd be very difficult. So moving on to um, potentially big news, Uh, PayPal Venmo to roll out crypto buying and selling, says sources, not officially PayPal. So currently PayPal can be used as an alternative means for withdrawing funds from exchanges such as Coinbase, but this would be a first in terms of offering direct sales of crypto. So yeah, for a while you used to be able to actually buy crypto with PayPal on some of the early exchanges. And then you can spoof PayPal so easily and exploit it. Uh, so, so they got rid of that. Um, so I wouldn't, you know, direct sales of crypto, but used to be able to put money from PayPal onto exchanges, you know, like 20, 2011 sort of deal uh, way back in the day. And you'd be able to buy crypto with the money. So never direct sales, uh, but you can cash out to PayPal with Coinbase. Uh, I don't know why you would. My understanding is that they are going to allow buys and sells of crypto directly from PayPal and Venmo, a well-placed industry source told Coindesk. So again, this is taken with a grain of salt. However, I think this would be big for crypto. Um, I don't think it would like uh, rocket the price to all time high or anything like that, but uh, it's, you know, PayPal deals with a lot of money every day and why they haven't got, I think they, at first they thought, okay, crypto is our, um, you know, is our competition. So if we, if we actually facilitate crypto transactions, then we're just, we're honestly facilitating uh, the competition. But, you know, if you can't beat them, uh, join them. Um, it's unclear which or how many cryptocurrencies would be available. Almost certainly Bitcoin, you know, in the top few. The industry source said they expected PayPal would be working with multiple exchanges to source liquidity. Fair enough. A second source confirmed that PayPal is looking to offer buying and selling of crypto and said the services could be expected in the next three months or sooner. So PayPal declined to comment on the plans. Uh, San Francisco-based crypto exchange Coinbase and Luxembourg-based Bitstamp were mentioned as likely contenders by the sources, considering both Coinbase and uh, Bitstamp, um, you know, use, uh, or at least I'm not actually sure about Bitstamp, but uh, Coinbase, you can definitely cash out to PayPal. So, you know, now that they have that working relationship, you know, it's really just a, another a small step to actually start selling and, and buying cryptocurrency with it. Um, it'll probably be insanely expensive considering PayPal, um, you know, um, you, you kind of know PayPal's fees uh, more and more, like the, the more you use PayPal, the more you realize that the fees are absolutely outrageous. You know, if somebody sends you $5 in PayPal, you get like $3 and 80 cents, you know, $4 or something like that. So they really take quite a bit of the money. So I wouldn't recommend using PayPal to buy and sell, but people will probably do it anyway. It's worth noting that PayPal has a longstanding relationship with Coinbase going back as early as 2016. And in 2018, Coinbase made instant fiat withdrawals to PayPal available for US customers. So that could be, you know, fairly big. Um, It could interest some other people. I'd like to see if like PayPal actually had a crypto wallet on their system. So you could just transfer, you know, just log into PayPal and use your wallet. Uh, that would be nice, but uh, hopefully the secure. Hopefully they realize what they're getting into, because when you, when you start getting into buying, selling, holding cryptocurrency, you need to realize that you're going to be a big, big target for a lot of hackers. And um, you know, hopefully they, hopefully they keep it in check. 
So moving on to uh, coin market cap here. Uh, 9,596 Bitcoin up about 2.74% for the day. Some other coins a little bit higher, some lower, but check in with the Dow uh, because I've been always just checking like the, the correlation between the actual stock market and the cryptocurrency as, as of 2020. And there was a, a, an increase today, but it was only 0.59%. Uh, it was only up 153 points, which is good, uh, but 0.59%, you know, compared to the crypto world is not a lot. So uh, I, I would I would argue that this isn't the correlation day. Um, you know, it might be a mild correlation at best. Um, and, and I'm just keeping track of it for, I think like the rest of this year at least to just to get an idea, like is, if crypto goes up, does, does the Dow go up or, or vice versa? Are they going up together? Are they going down together? And I'm sort of doing that every video. And I think at the end of the year, I kind of want to like sort of get all that data that are things that I've said and make a lot more points of like individual days that it was quite correlated. But uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Make sure you like and subscribe to the videos. And as usual, I'll see you guys next time.